It is no longer news that scammer and froster Raymond Abbas, aka Horse Puppy, has been in US custody since June last year after his arrest and subsequent extradition from Dubai to the United States. Hush Puppy, who is facing many years in prison, decided to reduce his prison term by making a plea bargain deal with US prosecutors. Having done the deal, he has been singing to FBI agents and the latest person to be involved in his web of crimes is Abba Kiare, a high-ranking Nigerian police officer. Some accusations have been made in the past about the modus operandi of Abba Kiare and the special police squad that he leads, but nothing have come close in evidence as this one with scammer Horse Puppy. Let's take a quick look at the events that led to Horse Puppy wiring 8 million naira, which is approximately $16,000, to a Zenith Bank account that Kiare sent to him. The scam started when a Qatari businessman was looking for a bank to lend him $15 million for a school project he wanted to build in Qatar. Juma somehow got the information about the Qatari businessman's needs. You know, most of these scammers scour the internet looking for all sorts of information on people in order to scam them. That's why people should be cautious of the type of information they post online, most especially personal information that fully identifies them. Juma is an associate of Horse Puppy and a Kenyan national living in Nairobi. He quickly contacted the Qatari businessman, telling him that he would provide the loan. At this stage of the scam, Horse Puppy makes contact with the Qatari businessman, introducing himself as Malik, who works for a United States-based bank that can facilitate the provision of the loan. This is how scams work, and you should always apply common sense. As they say, if it is too good to be true, then it is definitely not true, but a scam. After Horse Puppy and Juma have convinced the businessman that they are genuine and at this stage they have established a level of confidence between them, they told the businessman to do some transactions as a form of taxes and other elaborate schemes that scammers use. This, as they told the man, would expedite the loan. Quickly, the payments began to trickle in from the businessman. Horse Puppy received hundreds of thousands of dollars from the businessman. At this stage, Horse Puppy needed to convince the businessman that the loan has been approved. This he will use to receive more money, even more, that will run into millions of dollars from the businessman. So he needed a fake bank website. For the website, he contacted Chibuzo, who is based in Nigeria to build a fake bank website that they will use in perfecting the scam. Fake bank websites are used by scammers to defraud unsuspecting individuals. They use it to collect personal information about the customers and also the debit and credit card information. So always check on the website to make sure that it is the correct bank website that you're about to use. Yeah. At this stage of the scam, everyone involved in the scam was happy making money from the victim until Chibuzo felt that the cut Horse Puppy was giving him wasn't big enough. In order to up his court in the elaborate scam, Chibuzo contacted the Qatari businessman, telling him that Horse Puppy and Juma are scammers, that he is the genuine person that can help him that he should stop any further dealings with Horse Puppy and Juma. The Qatari businessman, feeling the whole thing might be an elaborate scam after all, decided to confront Horse Puppy to know the truth. But Horse Puppy ended up convincing him that it wasn't a scam, that he is a genuine person he should be dealing with. 
Hot Puppy, aware that Chibuzo wanted to hijack his elaborate scam, quickly called him and threatened to deal with him for daring to snatch his Mugu from him. Mugu is what scammers call the victim. In order to achieve his aim of teaching Chibuzo a lesson for trying to snatch his Mugu from him, Hot Puppy needed the help of a Nigerian Deputy Commissioner of Police, Abba Kiare. Hush Puppy put a call across to Abba Kiare, detailing how Chibuzo tried to hijack his elaborate scam and that he wanted Kiare to arrest and detain Chibuzo for a very long time so that he will not be able to communicate with the Qatari businessman again. He also wanted Chibuzo to be dealt with by the police to teach him a lesson. He sent Chibuzo's photo to Abakiare for easy identification in order to effect the arrest. Apart from Abakiare being involved in this elaborate scheme, a police officer should never act on the word of mouth of a citizen. Instead, a police officer, after receiving complaints from a citizen, should make investigations before arrest can be made just like the FBI did an elaborate investigation before effecting the arrest of Hush Puppy in Dubai, this is pure abuse of power, which is driven by nothing other than monetary gains. The police service shouldn't be for sale or for the highest bidder. Back to Abakiari, and now he is armed with Chibuzo's picture and other information about him, he quickly moved and arrested him and locked him up in a cell. He subsequently sent to Hush Puppy a picture of Chibuzo in a police cell, telling him that he has done his part of the deal. To complete his own part, Hush Puppy demanded a bank account number from Kiare to show appreciation and pay for his services. Kiare quickly obliged and Hush Puppy paid approximately 8 million naira, which is about $16,000 into the Zenith bank account that Kiare provided. Chibuzo's girlfriend, worried about his arrest, started making moves to secure his release from the police custody. She even contacted Hush Puppy for financial help, not knowing that Hush Puppy was the one that put Chibuzo in police custody through Abba Kiare. Hush Puppy sympathized with her but didn't reveal that he was the one that put him behind bars. He sent her 100,000 naira anyway. After a few weeks in illegal police detention, Chibuzo became sick and was taken to hospital for treatment. Afraid that he might die in custody, Kiari sent his pictures to Hush Puppy, urging him to accept that Chibuzo be released. Hush Puppy accepted that Chibuzo was very sick and deserves to be released. He was subsequently released. The FBI, with a court warrant, has requested for the extradition of Abakiari from Nigeria to the United States to face trial for his role in the elaborate scam. They think that the arrest of Chibuzo contributed to why the scam continued. That if Chibuzo was free, the infighting between the scammers would have truncated the scam and made the victim to realize sooner that he was being scammed. Chibuzo's arrest helped Hush Puppy to continue scamming the victim. Even after the victim suspected he was being scammed and fell out with Juma, Hush Puppy convinced the victim once again to send him $180,000, which he sent in two tranches of $100,000 and $80,000 to two US bank accounts controlled by Bulatito and Morayo. These guys then laundered the money for Hush Puppy. Bulatito bought and received a Richard Mill watch worth $250,000, which he sent to Murayo, and Murayo sent it to Hush Puppy in Dubai. It was revealed that Hush Puppy used some of the proceeds of this $1.1 million scam to acquire citizenship of St. Kitts. Okay, wonderful people, we hope you enjoyed this detailed info. We noticed that many videos of this aren't detailed enough, with many people still asking questions, so we decided to do a quick one. 
and we will keep trying new types of content to keep you entertained. As usual, push the subscribe button if you haven't subscribed and remember to enable notification. Thanks for watching.